the Mirage F-1 is a supersonic fighter manufactured by the French Dassault Aviation. Designed from 1964 as a private venture to be a successor to the Mirage 3 and 5, it used the fuselage of the Mirage 3 mated to a shoulder-mounted swept wing instead of the delta wing of the earlier aircraft. Although it has a smaller wingspan than the Mirage 3, the Mirage F-1 proved to be superior to its predecessor, carrying more fuel while possessing a shorter takeoff run and superior maneuverability. The first prototype flew on December 1966 and the French Air Force placed an order on May 1967. The first production deliveries were on May 1973, and the production run until 1992, with a total of 720 aircrafts built. On this mission, we will learn how to do a cold start on the Mirage F-1CE, following the procedure of the real aircraft, adapted for DCS. The cold start procedure includes the following sections, after entering cabin, cabin checks, which are optional, dot, engine start, after start checks, the approximate mission time is 30 minutes, press spacebar to begin. You can adjust the sound volume produced by the background air traffic, by moving the in cockpit sound slider on the DCS options, audio screen, which you can access by pressing the escape key, this instructor's volume level can be adjusted with the helmet sound slider. Also, you can press spacebar to skip long voiceovers. By default, this training mission follows the full cold start checklist of the Mirage F1, including all systems checks. However, you can choose to omit all non-essential steps if you prefer just to learn the basics of this cold start. Press backspace if you prefer to omit all checks, or press when it's dark, you can turn on the flashlight by pressing left alt plus L. The radar hood can be removed while on the ground and with the canopy open. Just to cut down on the external noise, close the canopy to its full down position by clicking on its handles or by pressing left control plus C. If you want, you can open the canopy to its intermediate position by clicking on its small top strut, followed by a click on either canopy handle. The mirrors can be turned out of the way by clicking on either one of them. Press M to deactivate their image, gaining a bit of extra graphics performance. Remove the ejection seat safety pin. The safety pin prevents an accidental ejection when the airplane is on the ground. You remove it by left clicking on it and dragging towards the front of the aircraft. You can also use the mouse wheel. The Mirage is equipped with a Martin Baker ERM6 ejection seat, provided with a face-blind firing handle above the pilot's head, and an alternative firing handle between his feet. Parking brake. Check it is set, its handle should be vertical and out. The Mirage F1 can be cold started using just battery power, thanks to an inverter that can convert the DC power of the battery, onto AC power for some essential equipment. Battery switch, set it to on. This action, connected the battery to the battery bus. On the top row of the warning panel several lights illuminate, Alt 1 and Alt 2. The generators 1 and 2 are not producing power, because the jet engine is not active yet, TR1 and TR2. The transformers 1 and 2, which normally convert the AC power from the generators into DC power, are not active, since the generators are out. SEC. The inverter is supplying power to the emergency AC system. The battery is the only source that supplies the electrical system at the moment. It has an endurance of at least 13 minutes if the electrical pump is off. Warning horn switch, enable. The horn goes active to confirm that it is operating. You can adjust your seat height by click and hold on the highlighted switch. Left click raises the seat, right click lowers it, it is very handy when landing as a high angle of attack can impede your view of the runway. Starting is made on battery, with canopy closed or partially open, and parking brake set, but before proceeding, we will contact air traffic control to request startup. Make sure the green radio is on and set to the manual frequency of 122.0 MHz, and the green knob is pushed in on the audio panel. Next, press the backslash key to bring up the DCS communications menu. OK, now select F5, ATC, F1, H3 Airbase. F3, request startup. Uzi, one, one. 
one. Press Request spacebar startup. once ATC has granted clearance. Press F12 to clear the menu. LP main fuel cock, coupe view, switch to open, towards the left, and then guard it. Left and right LP pumps, set to on, left. Ignition or ventilation selector, switch to other ignition plug, to permit alternate use of the plugs upon starting. The Mirage engine has two separate ignition coils and any one of them can ignite the fuel-air mixture to start the engine. To have them wear evenly, on the real Mirage a start log is kept, that allows you to select the least used coil for the next engine start. The right position is used to ventilate the engine in case of a failed start, motoring it without ignition nor fuel intake. Lift the starter button guard, with a left click. This action pushes to on the starting LP pump. This fuel pump is used only during the jet engine startup, supplying additional fuel pressure for the start. The BP, low fuel pressure, warning light should go out. Once the BP light goes out, immediately depress the starter button for one second, with a left click. Never exceed two seconds with the button depressed. At 300 to 600 RPM, move throttle to idle by moving the lever forward and then back. The low oil pressure light should be on until RPM reaches 2000. Watch the RPM and jet pipe temperature indicators and check that the engine accelerates normally. The ALT 1 and 2 lights should go out at 26 to 2800 RPM, as the alternators are now online. Idle RPM should stabilize close to 2900, the Hydro 1 and 2 lights should go out as the engine reaches idle. Flick the inverter switch to its reset position, with a left click. The SEC light goes out. On the environmental panel, master valve control switch, set to on. This enables both the cockpit and the avionics bay cooling. Temperature control, set to auto. The environmental system will keep a comfortable temperature automatically. On the heading control panel, the Mirage F1 carries a main gyroscopic system and an emergency gyroscope that feed information to other systems such as the site, the spherical indicator, the autopilot and the navigation indicator. Gyroscope reference system selector, set to GM, gyroscope, magnetic. Emergency gyromagnetic compass selector, set to on, so it will work as a backup for the main gyroscopic system. The gyroscopes will begin their alignment process, which takes about two minutes, during which you can continue this procedure. The CAP light will go out once the gyros are aligned. On the navigation panels, our aircraft is equipped with both a Tarkin and a VOR ILS system. The heading, distance and flight slope information VOR and ILS set to on. For training purposes, let's tune it to the nearby at Tanf Airbase VOR. Its frequency is 114.0 MHz. Tarkin, set to air-to-air -to -air and select station. Iraq has no ground Tarkin stations, but for this training mission, we will tune our tanker's Tarkin which is orbiting nearby, its channel is 054 X-ray. On the bearing selector box, select VOR and ILS, or TAC. For this mission, set it to VOR. On the armament control panel, Radar selector, set to standby, this will activate the radar on standby mode. Sight, HUD, set to normal, mid position. This is a three position switch, aft is off, its mid position is on, marche, and its forward position places the sight in, approach, mode, with velocity vector. Next, let's enable all the electric powered systems. Standby horizon switch, set to on, to power up the backup horizon indicator. Hydraulics electric pump, set to on, the hydro S, light goes out. Warning horn switch, check it's still on. Probe heat switch, set to on. 
the pitot probes and some of the static air data inlets will be heated to prevent ice buildup. The Anemo light goes out. Radar detector, RWR, switch, set to on. Searchlight switch, as required. The searchlight is a fixed lateral light fitted on the left side of the fuselage. It illuminates forward on a bearing of 22 to 42 degrees to port. The light is operated with the control stick searchlight button. Finally, let's enable the last items on the front instruments panel. Navigation indicator, set to VT or as desired. Standby horizon, uncage, by turning the mouse scroll wheel over the knob to center the index, this will uncage the standby horizon. Radar detector warming panel, test and adjust its tone. Shock cone push button, depress, for automatic operation of the engine inlet cones. Nose wheel steering, select high sensitivity, by pressing the DIR button. Flight control servos, reset by pressing this knob, the remaining warning lights should clear after this reset. There still remains one warning light, P cab. It alerts us that the cabin is not yet pressurized. Push the lock control forward, to lock and seal the canopy, the warning light should go off. Congratulations, this completes the abbreviated cold start procedure. Perhaps some other time you will take a look onto the full procedure, including the cabin checks. Press spacebar to exit the mission.